Thanks a lot, Anna. Here I, here I get to try the microphone out again. Is it got, uh, <coughs> hello, testing, testing. Is, is the mic on? No. no. Okay. It's a trying situation. Wait, what? It's a trying situation. A trying situation. Yeah, would someone try? Like, uh, <laughs> what? I believe it's a paradigm. It's a paradigm. Okay. What, what happened last week? Some, somebody, somebody threw uh, uh, their keys up at the... Hello, people? <laughs> um, hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello, can anyone hear? Is that better? Okay, good. All right, well, uh, uh, I try to get used to the MIT paradigms. So uh, today's talk, I'm, I'm, I'm talking today about uh, randomization and religion. Uh, is, and, the, uh, and actually at the end, uh, before the questions, I'll remind you what the other talks are. Um, I've got, um, uh, you know, I've got six talks altogether, uh, five more after last week. And the and these five are pretty much independent of each other. If you you know if you miss uh, 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 two, three, and four, that doesn't make you ineligible to to come to number five. And uh, or, you know or or if you you know or, or if you don't like any of them, you can stop coming altogether or whatever. But uh, but but each each talk is uh, uh, is pretty much uh, independent. And uh, I have lots of things I wanted to say during these lectures, and I and I tried to uh, uh, you know so I tried to partition them into into segments and things that I that I thought I would say in one I turn out to fit better in another and so on so so that, that way uh, uh, I can try to balance the balance the thing um, now so today I thought I uh, first one I would talk about randomization because it really in my sub area of computer science uh, one of the most important breakthroughs uh, uh, if, if somebody would ask me what in the last in the last ten years uh, what was the most important uh, change in the study of algorithms? Uh, uh, I would have to say that um, that uh, people getting really familiar with randomized algorithms had to be the winner. Uh, um, now, uh, already in the 1940s, people invented the Monte Carlo method, uh, uh, which was used a lot in you know for calculations with uh, with um, nuclear physics and so on. In the 50s. People invented hashing. Uh, in the 60s, we we played around with randomizing of data. In the 70s, so uh, we applied randomization to factoring and things. Uh, but then, uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, it got uh, it got a, a big boost by by quite a few other uh, other discoveries. And uh, uh, for example, network routing and things like that in the 80s. And and now uh, uh, it's it's to the point where there's uh, Lots of universities have have uh, a course that runs either half year or full year on randomized algorithms. Uh, textbooks are, uh, have come out, um, and uh, there's proofs now that that in certain for some problems, randomization allows us to solve them faster than any method that didn't use random numbers. That any deterministic method is it has to run a lot slower than a method that that takes advantage of randomization. Uh, so. Um, uh, uh, yesterday, I was at Har at uh, Harvard, and I spoke to Michael Rabin, uh, who's uh, I, I think everyone considers the, to be the father of randomized algorithms. And to my great surprise, here he is in the audience today. Um, and uh, I, but I, you know, I asked him uh, if he would have some advice on what I would uh, on what I should talk about today: um, uh, randomization and religion, and. His his first reaction was that I should I should talk about the question do do random numbers really exist? Um, <laughs> uh, you know because because this this gets into question of of, of free will and and what uh, and 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 uh, uh, you know the questions of of what is the world deterministic and so on. Um, uh, now uh, now however I, uh, that's one of the questions I'm not going to discuss today. Uh, <laughs> That's for lecture number six. The lecture number six, I'm going, I, I, I do plan to uh, 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 to discuss uh, uh, as as far as I can uh, 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 things about about free will and omnipotence of God and things like this. Uh, uh, as far you know, and I hope I'll have something interesting to say at that time. But today uh, I'm talking uh, about a different aspect of the subject. Uh, and from a, from my personal point of view, with the randomized algorithms, uh, about 1970, I published a paper that uh, uh, that explained a method I'd been I'd been using a lot during the 60s to estimate the running time of backtrack program. 
Uh, backtrack programs, that pe the computer scientists in here, would, would, you know, you, one of the standard things that people teach in programming classes is the N queens problem. Uh, how do you put, uh, uh, you know, how do you put 20 queens on a 20 by 20 chessboard in, in all possible ways, or maybe 10 or 8 <laughs> uh, on an 8 by 8 chessboard and so on. And, and uh, the, the uh, probably the, uh, the, the, the only decent way until N gets real large to solve this problem is by process of trial and error where you, uh, uh, where you, you know, you first try placing one queen and then you try placing the second and, and so on. And uh, uh, when you have a backtrack algorithm like this, uh, experience shows that uh, som sometimes the backtrack process runs zip in a second or two. Sometimes uh, you look at it and it looks like it's going to take many, many centuries before it, uh, before it stops. And it's not easy to tell the difference. So I worked out a method by which, uh, by, by rolling the dice, I could take a random path. Uh, you know, at first I placed, a, uh, you know, it was, it was an extremely simple method. Uh, it, like for the end queens, I would first say, put the first queen in a, in a random place uh, and write down the number of possibilities I had. Then I put the second queen in a, in a random place for, consistent with that uh, and write down how many choices I had for that and keep on going. And I multiply all those numbers together and I and I and add them in a certain way, and you can prove that the uh, expected uh, value of this quantity is the expected number of computations you're going to need in order to solve the the, the, the problem. So, um, uh, so so I published that, as I say, about 1970, and I had some experience. Uh, it, it it worked amazingly well, actually. Um, and uh, in 1976, I gave a talk here in Boston at the uh, the survey talk about about, it was called Coping with Finiteness at the uh, meeting of the uh, American Association for Advancement of Science. And in that talk, I, I uh, used this estimation method uh, for, uh, for, for, for this problem. I, I say, how many ways are there to get from, from one corner of this grid to the, to the opposite corner by a path that, ne that doesn't cross itself? You know, so, so some path like this. This is an 11 by 11 grid. And by taking a random uh, a walk on this thing, and, and you know, and, and sometimes I have two choice, sometimes I have three for the next step. Multiply together, and so on. I and and I did, and on a computer, I I tried this a few thousand times, and I estimated uh, in that talk that the total number of of paths from corner to corner would be 1.6 plus or minus 0.3 times 10 to the 24th. Now. Uh, but I didn't believe that uh, in, ever in my lifetime I would know the answer to that, that problem. I just, uh, you know, uh, it, I felt, you know, you could, uh, a huge number like that, uh, I, uh, you, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, no matter how, you know, computers are getting faster and faster, but this is way, way out there, you know, 10 to the 24th. It, it, um, it, uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's, we're going to be through a lot of more Y2K crises before that would, you know, that would happen. So, uh, I mean, you, you know, the Y10 crisis, it, it, if you think Y2K is bad, wait until the year 99, 99. So, so, um, uh, so um, uh, but uh, a couple of years later, Richard Chappelle, who was uh, an illustrious MIT grad, uh, pointed out that, uh, that there was, in fact, a way to calculate this number exactly. And uh, nowadays, we would say it's because the problem uh, has small tree width. And uh, so, uh, in fact, on a PC, um, uh, we could do it now in about 10 seconds. Uh, uh, and here's the, here's the exact number. Now, uh, to my great relief, uh, uh, <laughs> it, it was, in fact, 1.6 times 10 to 20. You know, it was, uh, now, I, I don't know. Maybe I was just lucky. But anyway, this, was, this, this is the way I got started in randomization. Okay. Now, now um, uh, uh, so for qua for quantitative problems, it, it was it was clearly a, a win. What about, but I started using it also for qualitative things. Uh, so you know, as a as a um, uh, as a teacher, for uh, for example, in teaching at Stanford, I I often use randomization when I'm grading papers. Um, <laughs> now, yeah, you see, I, I I'm, I'm sure students sort of suspected this all the time, but but. Um, in fact, uh, 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 let me explain. So, so a student presents me with a 200-page listing of a, of a program that they wrote. You know, this is a term project. And I, I don't have time to read th that 200-page listing. So I turn to a random page, and I look very closely at what's on that page, and that suggests other pages that I should look at. And so I, and so I look, you know, the part that I do look at, I, I check over very carefully, 
uh, and that you know that'll call a subroutine. Maybe I have to check out what that subroutine does and 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 go through and go through the program. But I don't have to read all, all 200 pages. Student doesn't know which page I'm going to look at, and uh, and so I, I I could get a pretty good idea as to the quality of the program by by this approach. And in fact, now there's all kind of theories about uh, about you know zero knowledge proofs and things where people can. Uh, uh, can prove that they know something without revealing uh, 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 how they do it, and and, and so on. There's, um, uh, in other words, randomization has turned out to to be uh, uh, useful also in ways we didn't suspect at all. Um, uh, a few years later, I I uh, uh, tried to figure out what is mathematics, you know, um, uh, and and in other words, I wanted to know what I would have to teach a computer. Uh, in order to, for it to say the computer understood mathematics, and, and the way I the way I approached this was I I took nine uh, uh, text uh, nine books that I felt were were typical of things mathematicians do, and I looked at page 100 of each book, and I and I said now what would I have how would I uh, have to program a computer so that it would uh, it would be able to create or at least understand the mathematics that's on page 100 of these of these nine books. Um, and I, I think by this means, you know, I, I don't, I'm not calculating uh, some formula where I get plus or minus or something like this, but it gave me a better, much better insight into this question as to what is mathematics than if I had uh, just asked a bunch of mathematicians uh, what, what, what it was or if I looked at somebody else's definition. Um, now, um, shortly after that, then, I, I decided to do a similar thing with the Bible. Um, uh, it was uh, 1978. I think last week I said 76. I was mistaken. Uh, I looked at my diary again t uh, today. But anyway, th uh, so so the Bible. Uh, I wanted to study verses of the Bible, uh, and there are 31, 000, about 31,000 verses in the Bible altogether. Uh, so one way you could you could study uh, this, you know, but by similar to the way I did with the student grading and and asking what is mathematics, I could take these 31,000 verses and put them onto slips of paper. And put this into a big urn, and then I could stir the urn, you know, and then draw out random slips of paper, and I would look at at, at what was on those on those slips of paper, and that would give me some idea as to what's uh, what's in the Bible. Um, now, um, uh, it's even better, however, uh, my experience with these backtrack calculations uh, showed it would even be better it would be better than that to, uh, if I would uh, make sure that I would choose. Uh, let's suppose I was choosing 60 verses, for example. I, it's better if I choose one verse out of each book of the Bible. The Bible actually has 66 books. So, so, so in this way, uh, uh, it's called stratified sampling in, in, uh, to statisticians. Uh, I, I'm sure that, that, uh, uh, that things aren't all lumping in, into, the same, into the same place. Um, and... Uh, uh, so uh, I thought, well, it'd be, it'd be neat to try this and just to see, see what I what I get. Um, and uh, so I, just, I I was asked at that time to to teach a Bible class at my church. Uh, for for years I had always been sitting in, but never but never uh, as the teacher. And they said, Hey, Don, it's your turn now. So so I said, Okay, uh, 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 sir, if you're right, uh, well, you can go through with me this experiment. We're going to look at random verses of the Bible. Um, <laughs> And so the assignment what for the first day of class, everyone was supposed I, I decided by the, that, that uh, a, a way that I could get one, one um, verse out of each book of the Bible was to look at chapter 3, verse 16. I'll explain a little more about that in a minute, but, but basically um, for the first uh, class, everyone was asked to look at Genesis 3:16, Exodus 3:16, Leviticus 3:16, the, uh, the first three books of the Bible ch in chapter 3, verse 16. Um, in preparation for the, and I hadn't read those verses yet myself. Uh, it's important that uh, you know if you're doing an experiment like this, you don't you don't uh, uh, you don't rig the data. So, um, uh, however, I did rig, of course, in one place. A lot of you will know that the most famous verse in the Bible, at, uh, uh, in the whole Bible by its number, is John chapter three, verse sixteen. Um, this uh, and the reason I you know and the reason I rigged it in this way, in fact, was because I didn't want. Uh, uh, the, the pastor of my church to, to say this class was a dud and we didn't get to anything anything interesting, so we were sure at least to hit one good one in. in <laughs> uh -huh. 
Now, this, not, you know, John 3.16 is so famous, you know, even in Singapore, it, later on when I wrote this book called 3.16, the title of the book, if, if you can see it, it just says 3.16. Um, the, um, the book was printed in Singapore, and, um, and uh, all the correspondence with Singapore says, you know, we're, uh, with the printers in Singapore says that we're, we're, um, uh, we're sending you this book uh, and, you know, the, all, the, all the plates to, for printing this book called 316. Um, but when the boxes came back and were shipped to America, uh, it, uh, it was all identified as John 316. <laughs> so so in, even in Singapore, where less than 10% of the people are, are Christian, somehow they knew that John 316, I mean, maybe they were watching tele, uh, football programs or something. <laughs> I, um, but um, uh, so, so a lot of people think that the title of this book is John 3.16 because that verse is so famous. Uh, it, it just has a, it, it was, for, for me it was a catchy number that, uh, that the people in my class would know so they'd be able to remember what, what it was. Um, uh, you know, they wouldn't have to look it up. Uh, so, okay, so now um, we could have rolled dice, you know, we get a better random sample, you know, uh, we get a better random sample if we, if we use randomization instead of a fixed deterministic method like chapter 3, verse 16, um, uh, really, the, uh, you know, there's no reason for us to think that there's anything unusual about the chapter 3, verse 16, except in the book of John. But, uh, uh, but I didn't like this idea of, of, of rolling dice for, for several reasons. One is that uh, uh, you would have to, uh, uh, we would have to uh, do it in advance or, or, you know, if people were going to prepare for the class. Uh, and then, they, they, you know, if you miss a class, then you don't know what to do for, for next time. Um, but the other one is that when you roll a dice, you, there, there's, a, there's a temptation to, to cheat uh, and to say that, you know, you get a bad roll and you say, well, I didn't really, you know, it slipped. It, you know, there was, you know, there, there was, a, you know, there was, a, there was something on the table that bumped into it. Let's try again, you know. And so, and so, um, uh, and so this way, it was, some, it was a rule that actually couldn't be rigged. Um, now, um, give you some other examples. If, if I were an astronomer, um, I would love to make a, a look at, uh, a, at random points in the sky. I would choose, um, I, I, you know, I maybe I don't know how many. It depends on, how, uh, but I, I would like like to make a really exhaustive survey of of, of different parts of the sky, random sky. But I, I would try to choose them. Uh, um, in, uh, in, uh, in, in some way that it wouldn't, you know, it's not some other astronomer telling me what, what place to aim my telescope, but I would just find, uh, to find a random, and, and I would announce in advance, before I had looked anywhere, I would announce in advance how I was going to do this by some rule that, that, couldn't be, that couldn't be rigged. For example, I'd base it on the digits of pi. Somehow, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd use uh, uh, digits of pi, say 1,000 through 1,005 or something like this to get the, to get the coordinates. Um, you know, this would be pie in the sky. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. <coughs> now, you know, I, I, I really believe that a survey like that would, would be quite informative. Okay. Now, an, another example my, uh, was told to me by my son-in-law on, on Sunday. He said he was inspired by the 316 book to, uh, to, to start up a, the H20 project, which would, t which would uh, give them ideas, what is Massachusetts? Uh, they have a book of, of uh, maps of Massachusetts that are at a large scale, and um, and uh, and they live. You know, he, uh, Greg is in uh, uh, civil engineering here at MIT, and they live fairly near the campus. And they live in in H20 in the in, in the corresponding map of of uh, Cambridge, and so they're going to look. They're going to look at. They're going to try to visit uh, H20 in all the other in all the other parts of this uh, of this map and, and that'll give you a pretty good idea as to what Massachusetts is like really okay um, you know the, the, the election of uh, uh, Cambridge is having an election for a city council coming up uh, next month and uh, and uh, um, I, I I would think that you know if I were mayor of Cambridge uh, I would do the following I, I Cambridge has about a hundred thousand people in it and uh, I would divide the city into 50 s sections say and uh, about equal size or population, I guess. Um, and then I would find some way to select uh, one person at random in each of those 50, uh, uh, each of those 50 districts, and I would uh, I would set aside maybe Wednesday evening, uh, where or you know afternoon, where I would I would invite that person over to my house and get to know them very well. And uh, after a year, I would have I, ha I would have. Um, 
and gotten the idea as to what 50 people of Cambridge uh, uh, want uh, the mayor to do and, and uh, how, how I could help them best. I think this is uh, this would be way better than just you know listening to people who paid most for your uh, campaign, right? Uh, and in fact, uh, so th th I'm doing the same kind of thing you see with the, with the Bible uh, as, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, uh, I, I try to really interview the verses that I've chosen. Uh, when I'm in a bookstore nowadays or in a conference uh, where I'm looking at a table full of new books. Um, uh, I try to, uh, to 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 gauge how good the book is that I'm looking that I that, you know that's that's there uh, by uh, um, well I guess I have to reveal the secret so I turn to page 316 um, <laughs> and uh, you know and I and I sort of make a make an impression of the whole book from by reading that page as carefully as I can um, or if a book is short I I use page 100 um, uh, so if you you know authors take note you know if you want me to <laughs> um, but um. Uh, it, wor it, it works quite well, I think. Um, in fact, uh, I, 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 well, I don't want to go on it, but the, you know, it's something like the Gallup poll, where the people in the Gallup poll go out and interview a thousand people, and then they tell us what Americans are thinking. Uh, this, uh, this, this sampling method uh, really uh, gives, um, although, although it's not guaranteed to work at all, uh, it, it, really, uh, it, re it really has an amazing uh, uh, power to, to give you a lot of insight of, uh, in, a, in, a, you know, in making fairly good use of your time, give you a lot of insight about any complicated subject. Uh, so anyway, that's why I tried the, uh, the 316 rule in 1978. And um, uh, I had to, uh, however, uh, I had to debug the, the rule. After the class got going, um, I soon realized that some books of the Bible don't have three chapters. Uh, uh, so, in fact, there are seven books we had to leave out because we didn't get up to 316 uh, uh, out of the so, so uh, the 66 books were down to 59. Um, in fact, there was a close one. Uh, in the Book of Titus ends at chapter three, verse 15. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and, and then uh, we, st we went a little further and realized that. Uh, had to go back to the drawing board again because some sometimes there's a chapter three, all right, but it doesn't have. 16 verses, so, so we had to go into chapter 4. So, so the idea was uh, that the rule was really the 16th verse after the beginning of chapter 3, provided that you can get that far. Okay, now, so, so anyway, this gave us 59 pretty random verses of the Bible, except in the case of Book of John, and uh, this poster shows the, shows the 59 verses, uh, plus the logo 316 to, to make it 6 by 10. Um, <laughs> So now, and and you know, I I had this poster in my office uh, for ten years now, and it, it's it's kind of interesting. I don't get tired of it. I look up by that again, and I see something, uh, something new. Um, partly because the artwork is good, but also um, uh, I, I like it because it's it, it's kind of a map of the Bible, the map of the themes of the Bible. Uh, and in fact, some people have called this method of Bible study the way of the cross section. So, <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> I'm, di I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, a a anyway, the, the Bible class was was remarkably successful, and start we started out with about a dozen people the first the first week, and and we went on for about half a year, and the and the interest continual continually was building. We had to move to a new another room, it's a larger room, and so on. And so, you know, last week I, ex I promised to explain uh, this idea about chapter 3, verse 16, why it would make perfect sense, and I hope now you understand. Um, uh, let me think. Uh, okay, so now, uh, why, did it, why did it seem to work out? I, I think there are two main reasons why it, why it uh, proved to be good. Uh, the first was, uh, the, fr the first reason you can understand, if you, if you uh, think of the traditional, uh, traditional definition of, of a liberal education, uh, um, uh, I've heard this, I don't know where, where I heard it first, but it was a liberal education is supposed to teach you something about everything and everything about something. And, and here was uh, a, a good case in point. That is, uh, uh, I, I, I knew something about all parts of the Bible because I had been going to uh, church and Lutheran schools and so on in my, in my early years. But I didn't know, I, there was no part of it where I had e ever tried exhaustively to find everything out. 
and and th th it, me it means a, a great deal whether you, when you when you have some where you have just a vague knowledge about everything, or if there are a few things um, that you really know um, where you really feel you've surrounded them, and you've uh, you found out just about everything about them that you that you could. Uh, this is so is similar to to what uh, you know the, uh, a lot of colleges try to teach. So so. Uh, uh, as as you'll, I'll try to explain uh, with these with these 59 verses, I tried to find out uh, not uh, just just look at them casually and say, oh, ah, great. But uh, instead, I go to the library and I would try to to scour uh, the best libraries of the world to find out uh, what everybody that that has written about these verses has said about them as much as I can. Fortunately, with the Bible, it's possible to do this because. Books about the Bible are very often indexed by the verses of the Bible that they refer to. So I could just look in the index at the back of the book, and that told me w what pages to look at of, of, of large books. I could go through shelf after shelf and pretty soon scour things. Where, uh, also, uh, commentaries are organized by verses. So it's lots of resources available in the library where I, where I could, in fact, uh, uh, you know, do a, a fairly quick uh, uh, Getting up to speed on on, one, on any one particular verse of the Bible. Um, this would take you know it's, it's no good if you're going to try to learn all 31,000 verses and uh, everything about all those. But but for a few of them, especially in these cases where the verses weren't really famous, uh, it was it was pretty easy for me to be you know I could become the world authority on on Leviticus 3:16 uh, because because nobody else would have done all this homework about that particular thing. Uh, okay now. So, um, and, and in fact, by this, by this means, uh, by, uh, even though I, I, uh, I had only 59 verses and I'm looking at only one five hundredth of the Bible, uh, it was amazing that, uh, uh, that, it, that the, the things, the different subjects that came up in this sent me, sent me through to the rest of the Bible. And, well, I have to talk more about that later. Um, now, but the, the really big win for, for this method is not for, for just, for studying the Bible uh, uh, it, it itself. I mean, um, Bible isn't that long a book. Uh, uh, you can read it all the way through. Uh, my, I, 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 my great grandfather was a blacksmith, and I and I, I learned that he, um, that he uh, uh, had a copy of the Bible in German, and he read it several times through during his life. I don't, don't think he was an educated man, but uh, uh, certainly it's it's possible to do that. But the thing that nobody can do is read all the all the secondary literature about the Bible. There's there's th tens and thousands of books, maybe hundreds of thousands of books, um, and uh, it's it's so daunting that certainly uh, 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 certainly somebody like me who's not a who's not a theologian would never crack open any of those books because there's too many of them, uh, or else the only ones I would I would crack open are are, are biased to the ones that people say people tell tell me to read. Uh, but as a uh, as a scientist, I don't feel that comfortable with just you know re reading the, the the top ten or, or or something that somebody somebody says is popular or great. Uh, I want to I want to know uh, something about the uh, the ordinary parts of the Bible to, to, in order to really assess what the Bible is about. So um, uh, so uh, the sec so uh, you see. Uh, uh, when I first did the class, I didn't have to. I didn't really do it exhaustively. I went to Stanford Library on Saturday, and I would spend a few hours preparing to read, reading up on uh, uh, five commentaries or something on, uh, and a few translations of the verses that we were going to do on the next day, Sunday. Um, but later on, after this class worked out so well, and and I and I, I decided that really uh, uh, this method was so uh, was was sufficiently interesting that I ought to make a book about it. Uh, then I then I really took it seriously, and I and I, I would work on each verse uh, uh, probably uh, three days solid. I mean, well, I, you know, I would start Friday afternoon, and uh, and work intensively through through until Monday noon uh, on each one, and by by really going to the best libraries I could uh, I, I could find for the best resources and 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 uh, checking out. Uh, so uh, everything there, so I, I could read books that that went on th through many centuries by uh, authors with many different viewpoints. Uh, of course, I read the classical commentaries by the by the most famous rabbis. I read I read things like the mystical literature from Saint Bernard of Clairvaux. I read 
Thomas Aquinas and scholastics. I, um, I read Calvin's commentaries. It, you know, as a, as a Lutheran, I, I wouldn't be ordinarily uh, motivated to to look at John Calvin's writings because I've heard about him. You know, they're dangerous. Um, <laughs> But in fact, he, he wrote commentary on every book of the Bible, and, and, uh, and so I only had to read 59 pages of those commentaries, basically, and, and, uh, and I, 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 I found that uh, they were great. I mean, I, I really thought he had, he, he had insights that I didn't find in any, any of the others, and so on. Um, uh, uh, I read uh, many dozens of commentaries by Catholic, Protestant, Jewish theologians, uh, in the 20th century, from ultra-conservative to ultra-liberal, and uh, uh, this way I could, uh, I, I could uh, kind of surround these, these 59 verses. I got to know them pretty well. Um, in fact, uh, I think of these 59 verses as, uh, like, like pegs on which I can hang a knowledge of, of the Bible. Every, every time I hear something about the Bible since then, um, it reminds me of something that's close to something that's close to one of the 316s. So I, so, you know, I, so I now have these sort of solid things that I, that, that I, before I didn't have anything solid, I just had a lot of wishy-washy uh, approximation. But here I have some solid things on which, uh, on which I, can, I can attach other, other stuff. So that's why I say this, this method turned out to be a success. Um, on the other hand, s sampling can be ineffective or misleading if you don't, if you don't understand its, the limitations of, of the method. In fact, I have to also say that when I'm working on this book, um, sometimes I'd wake up and wonder if, if the whole thing was, you know, if I wasn't just being totally insane by, by, by studying, the, the, studying things this way. Then I, I, I remind myself, well, maybe no, it's okay. Um, uh, but uh, in the first place, there's an obvious danger of confusing my approach with, with numerology. In fact, it's a it, uh, it, it, it surprised me, but a lot of people, when they first heard that I was studying the 316s, they, they figured out, well, I must believe there's something magical about these, uh, about these verses. Uh, you know, the number 3 and 16, uh, 16 is a perfect square. Wow, you know, and, and uh, uh, 3.16 is a square to 10. So uh, I'd get, I would get lit. So, so then people would, would send me letters trying to, to, to get me out of this delusion. They would say, Don, don't you realize that the you know, that uh, the chapter and verse numbers were added to the Bible long after uh, the, the, the material was written. And, uh, you know, but, but the, you know, it, that was a pre it precisely my point. The point was that, that it couldn't mean anything that it was chapter 3, verse 16. I, what I was looking for was precisely something that is a plain, old, ordinary, non-special verse that is uh, neither known to be uh, uh, exceptional in any direction, uh, except in the case of the book of John, uh, where, in fact, when I, when I studied the book of John, I didn't have any, you know, I, to get my satisfaction, I studied John 16.3. Uh, uh, um, uh, but, but I had to put 3.16 in this book of, uh, because people were looking for it. But, uh, uh, but, but for myself, I got more out of a random birth. Um, so, so uh, well, history is full of misguided attempts to read the, the Bible as a, as a book of mathematics because uh, we, it's so easy to find to find patterns in numerical data. Uh, the, uh, I, I think a lot of you know that, that Hebrew and Greek letters were, were associated with ways of, of representing numbers, so every word could also, be, uh, could also have, have a numerical significance, and so the, uh, a lot of people study what's called uh, gametria, uh, where you try to find uh, uh, some, some great significance in the numbers that are represented by words in the Bible. Uh, the most famous uh, in recent years uh, of this kind is the book called The Bible Code, which, uh, which, was, on, which was a bestseller two years ago. Um, in this, it, here's, the Bible Code uh, 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 started, well, there, there were several uh, uh, really prom excellent uh, mathematicians in Jerusalem who noticed uh, 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 some, some numerical things about the Hebrew letters in the Bible that they couldn't understand. Why, why they should have this pattern. And another man uh, uh, heard about it and decided to write this book called The Bible Code in which he has the Bible prophesying things that are going to happen in the future. And uh, so I looked it up on the web today uh, and I found that there was some, there was some really neat uh, uh, developments to this because uh, not only has this, have these patterns been, been explained by statisticians, but also uh, a guy from from CNET uh, 
found prophecies foretold in the Microsoft Access Developers Toolkit 2.0 license agreement. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and on Yahoo Internet Life, you could, you know, they have uh, uh, encrypted references to Bill Gates in the Book of Revelation. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and several websites started, or were started by people where you could, where you, you could look up and, and, and make your own predictions, uh, or, uh, you know. And, and so, um, but, but really, this, what? So, yeah, ex ex exactly. So, <laughs> So, um, uh, and, and so, uh, yeah, here was a, uh, so, so anyway, this, this page, uh, so, so then I, I looked at Amazon.com to find out if, the, you know, the book is still selling well, uh, now two years later, and uh, so it's, it's ranked 3967 in, uh, among all Amazon.com's books that's, uh, that, that ranks somewhere between volume one and volume three of the art of computer programming. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and it's it's way ahead of this book. This book is fifty-seven thousand, um, fifty-four thousand uh, uh, today. Now, okay. So anyway, um, uh, has two hundred and seven customer comments. They're quite fascinating. Everybody gives it either one star or five stars. Um, now, uh, well, but you know, uh, numerology uh, is is fun sometimes, but actually, some there's some th sometimes uh, people are can be get some satisfaction out of it if they don't misunderstand it. In fact, um, I, I, it reminded me of a few other things. In the early 80s, I was, uh, I was writing the, the tech book, the user manual for tech, and uh, I was looking for quotations to put at the end of the chapters of that book. And uh, I forget exactly why, but I was led uh, through some uh, uh, different uh, quote, quote books and sources. I was led to John Wesley's collected works, and I found uh, uh, the following in, in his uh, in volume five of his collected works. At some rare times, when I've been in great distress of soul or in other uncertainty how to act in an important case that requires speedy determination, after using all other means that occurred to me, I've cast lots or opened the Bible, and by this means I've been relieved from that distress or directed in that uncertainty. Um, the amazing thing is that this occurs on page 316. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you you can look it up. Uh, um, now here here he's you know, uh, he's using randomization for a different purpose. He's using it for 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 divine guidance. Uh, there are there are cases in the Bible where people cast lots, and that, which means in those days uh, rolling bones to find out how the bones would land. And uh, uh, I I know uh, that uh, the, in in China they use the I Ching with with randomization. I, I, when I was in Japan at, at Shinto temples. They had a really neat uh, randomizing device. Uh, I don't know what it's called, uh, where you where you shake it and out comes a, a stick, and this and the, the stick uh, has some kind of marks on it. Tells you which which uh, box to go for your for your uh, fortune for the day or something like this. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, this. So so there's there's a tradition of trying to to, uh, um, you know, m maybe God is, is, is forcing the way the dice are rolling or something that will, that, that will uh, uh, send some message. People have this craving to find, to find out. However, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know that there, there might be something to that, but I'm not do doing it that way at all. My, my use of random numbers is not, to, is not because of any magic there. I'm just trying to be systematic about the whole thing. Now, um, but I have to tell you another story that I decided not to put in the book because uh, I didn't want to mislead people. You know, six, six days before um, I, had to, I was starting to teach this class, I announced the class and said, come, you know, come on Sunday and reading Genesis 3.16 and so on. Um, I found myself in Stanford Hospital needing emergency surgery. This, it wasn't serious, but after I woke up and I was feeling kind of rotten, I wondered whether I should maybe postpone the, the Bible class. Uh, but then I noticed a curious thing. Uh, my hospital room number was 316. <laughs> so maybe God was smiling on this project, you know. So, okay, well, uh, uh, I got another story for you. That, uh, Lloyd Wainer was a famous baseball player for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was born on March 16th in 1906. Now, that's the, the 16th day of the third month, 316.06. And his lifetime batting average was 316. Could that be purely coincidental? I mean, and the answer is yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I started with, you know, I got this book of statistics, and I knew I would find something about 316 in there, you know, to, in order to make this example. So, so um, uh, uh, when you have a number in mind, you'll find that number a lot, and, and, you'll, and, and you're, you're, you'll, uh, other numbers will go out of your consciousness, and, and, uh, and so you only remember this. And, and Richard Feynman told this interesting story about the uh, time when he's in Los Alamos, and his wife is in the hospital, uh, she was an invalid and, and uh, in a city some, you know, uh, a couple hours away, I think. And he woke up suddenly one morning with, with a premonition that, that she really needed him. And, uh, and he drove to this other city. Well, no, not, nothing at all. Uh, uh, there, there was, you know, there, uh, it was just a random day for her. Um, and so he, he reported, he, so he says, I, I report this because People always report the times when these premonitions succeed, but they never report the times when they, when they fail. <laughs> so, so you have to understand coincidences in this way, I think. Now, um, the, uh, but the main danger to avoid when you're using an approach uh, like I did for the sampling is, uh, is, is, is to just look at, at, is to close your eyes to everything except the verse that you've selected. Uh, and, you know, like if I pick these things out of the urn and I would just look at that verse, um, and then I would, uh, you know, and I would think about it. Maybe I would, I would meditate about it. And I would, just, but I would just think about that one, and block out the context of the thing. Well, in the first place, um, uh, I had to have to think: what if people were to pour over the sentences of my own books in this way? I mean, the author, uh, you, you know, if, if, if somebody, uh, what, you know, what, what if what if somebody were to, were to take a word on page 316 of my book, you know, and hang on. A sentence and, and hang on every word of that sentence. You know, maybe write PhD thesis about what did I have in mind as I'm doing it. Uh, people examine the Bible uh, to such a with, with, with such an intense magnifying glass. Um, it, uh, you, you can't help but think the authors didn't uh, didn't really uh, uh, intend it for that to, to be to be scrutinized uh, to this thing, thing because they were thinking of a flow of of, of many verses. Um, now. Uh, of course, I, I can't understand what's in the 316 verse just from the 316 verse itself. I try to I try to put a very intense light on that verse. In other words, I try to st to study uh, uh, all the problems that, that might have occurred in transmission, but by copying. You know, the, the Bible is thousands of years old, and the, and over the years uh, the manuscripts got copied. They didn't have uh, uh, digital storage, uh, and uh, and errors would creep in. In, 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 and so you have to look at many different manuscripts, and, and uh, it was amazing to me. In fact, I didn't realize how almost every verse of the Bible has has cases where the 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 um, uh, the the, the, uh, the scholars who, who collate these manuscripts have had to make a, a call on on what was the what was the original. Um, uh, so so. Uh, in the 316 verse, I will look at all of these cases and I'll check over what the scholars have, you know, what, what the different manuscripts said, and uh, and uh, to, to get some idea as to as, as to how uh, how much variation there is. Uh, but when I but th then I also look at the you know 315 and 317, the neighboring verses. Uh, but uh, the light isn't so strong on those verses. I'm I, I'll, I'll I, I'm not going to study all the details of those verses, I'll accept the majority of opinion about what's the proper, uh, the proper text of those verses. And, uh, and, you know, the 14 and 18, even less. And so, so in this way, uh, just as when I was, um, just as when I was uh, grading the student papers, I would, I would, I would take, the, the, the page I chose would lead me to a few other pages, uh, but the, the farther away I get from, the, from my selected page, uh, the less time I, I, I put into a, a, a actually doing it. Uh, but, but the idea is uh, uh, to do this interpretation is, is, to, is to try to let the Bible interpret itself. When, I, when I'm trying to understand it uh, and, and I find another verse that has the same vocabulary, I look at that verse. I uh, find another verse that, has the, that treats the same topic, I look at that verse. Um, and that leads me through a lot more than the 59 verses of the Bible. In fact, uh, if you, uh, my book also has an index of the, of the Bible verses that are cited in the, in, in the book. And... Uh, it, the index goes over many, many pages. And, and for example, in, in Isaiah, uh, you know, it's 120, 126, 22, 23, 24, 27, 28, 34, 3, 14, and so on. All these, uh, uh, well, of course, chapter 3, you'd expect. But, uh, but anyway, uh, all the way through the, 
uh, all the way through the Bible. I'm, I, I'm checking out many other parts of the Bible in order to understand the 316s, not to such a great uh, uh, concentration, but uh, as part of showing light on it. Uh, also, the, the number of topics that, this lead, that, that these, these verses led to was amazingly diverse. Um, I, 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 can, I try to prove it to you by somebody would call out a, uh, a, a random letter of the alphabet, and I can read you some in entries out of the index of the book. Um, P, D, D for Don. OK. So here we go. Daniel, Dante, David, Day of Jehovah, Dead Sea, Dead Sea Scrolls, Death, Delich, Depression, Deutero Isaiah, Deuteron Deuteronomic History, Dice, <coughs> Disarmament, Disciples, Divorce, Domination, Doubts, Dove. <laughs> okay, and these are, these are, are, are topics and, and, and people that, that uh, occur in the discussion of, of uh, the 316. So um, uh, it, it, uh, in this way, by taking the context too, you're not making the mistake. In fact, I, I found out after, writing, after uh, publishing this book that uh, other people had independently come up with, this, with, 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 the, uh, with the idea. I mean, uh, a pastor in, in, pastors in New Hampshire and Missouri both wrote to me that they had uh, uh, that they had uh, thought of doing this and, and preached some sermons about the 316s. And a man in, in Pennsylvania had, had used them for, for, for study, and he sent me, and, uh, he sent me a, a copy of his, of his um, notes on them. But uh, by, I, in, in that case, I didn't care for what he sent me because he was only looking at the, at the 316 verse, and he would, he would quote the verse, and then he would, then he would make some kind of, a, to, to my mind, rather simplistic uh, summary of the thing again and then go on to the next one. Uh, I, I find the really important thing is that you go into it strong, so that you get this uh, 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 this this uh, this feeling of of uh, of, uh, 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 of getting getting as far, as much as you can out of the, out of the parts that you do choose to study. Now, does this rule of the 316s give a decent uh, sample? I um, I know in a lot of computer uh, programming, I don't have to have a truly random number, but if I, if I have uh, some other way of, of doing it, it, it turns out to be ran, random enough uh, for, for practical purposes. Um, but there is some, there's little problems, because the chapter 3 is near the beginning of a book, and so uh, it tends to be, uh, it, you know, the book has started to get underway, but it tends to be something that happens in the, in the, in the early part of a story. So, uh, in fact, we have, a, a, in chapter 3, we find the, the call of Moses, uh, the call of Samuel, the call of Ezekiel, and the call of Jesus uh, in the Gospels, uh, we're always talking about something that occurs early in in, in Jesus' ministry. Um, so uh, that's not quite as, as you know as varied as you would get from a from a from a random thing. More, uh, but that didn't really seem to matter too much. Uh, uh, the uh, more serious might be that some books are oversampled and some are undersampled. Uh, if you have a uh, uh, you know, the Psalms, for example, there are 150 Psalms, but I only get to look at one. Um, uh, it's, it, uh, uh, the book of Isaiah has, uh, uh, has a big break at chapter 40, where, where, where it seems that there's quite a different author at the, at the end. Uh, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing uh, the, the, the other parts. On the other hand, in the Hebrew Bible, the book of prophets, uh, uh, it, which the uh, which in our English Bible we call the the, the uh, uh, we, we separate out into the minor prophets. So we have Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, all as separate books. While in the uh, in, in the Hebrew Bible it's one book. So so the sampling works out uh, uh, that I that I learn a lot more about minor prophets than I do about Isaiah in this way. Um, uh, it's something like uh, you know in the U.S. Senate the. Uh, uh, Rhode Island has the same number of senators as Massachusetts does, uh, but it's not because every state is equally. Nevada and California are equal. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, uh, so. So there's a little there's a little uh, uh, error in the sampling for, for that. But all all told, I would say after avoiding those pitfalls, I think uh, uh, the whole, this uh, this methodology worked quite well, um, except for one. One thing, and uh, and that is, I was overconfident after I did it. Um, I, it worked too well. I, I felt that I had learned much more than I really. 
I mean, I have to keep telling myself I've only looked at one five hundredth of the Bible because I, the fact that I, the fact that I have surrounded a few verses gave me this feeling that I knew everything for some reason. I mean, I ha have to resist this temptation to to think that uh, that really um, that, that really I wouldn't have found out a lot more by studying more uh, because the be just because the methodology uh, uh, was uh, uh, had this has this. Uh, uh, gives you this chance to sort of feel to to to, to feel that you've learned something solid. Um, now uh, I've run a little past what I thought I would, but there's still plenty of time for questions. More than half hour. Um, I as Anna said, uh, it would be best if we tried to keep today's questions to to things about randomization. Uh, I'll give you a preview of what the next lectures are going to be. Next week Anna's out of town, so we've, we're we're waiting for two weeks. Two weeks from today. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, translating the Bible into English. And uh, the, the idea being that uh, even without knowing Hebrew and Greek, uh, uh, you can, you can uh, learn a lot by trying to translate it yourself using some good reference books. Um, sec the, then uh, the week after that uh, is... Um, uh, I'm talking about aesthetics. I'm talking. I, I, I want to to explain um, about uh, things that I that, that uh, the the artwork that came in for this book taught me, and I'll talk and, and a few other things about the the way that that uh, that beauty can contribute a lot to logic and to and to intellectual intellectual things. Uh, some things that are that that come through. Uh, it, with with our other senses and with uh, with with somehow this this th these um, uh, this aspects of uh, of aesthetics that that we don't know how to define. Um, the week after that is a panel discussion, and uh, the, and there we'll have some very distinguished speakers. We're going to announce who they are later on, and uh, but then my. Oh, by the way, in the fourth lecture with the uh, artwork, I, I'm going to bring. That's going to be uh, a lot of lot of great pictures. I have. I'm going to show you a lot of things that are, uh, that, are, that some artists sent me. That were, there, there was more than I could put in the book, and I'd like to show you uh, a lot of uh, a lot of great artwork at that time. Uh, then the fifth lecture, I'm going to sur summarize what I learned about the Bible by this 316 method, and what I learned about Bible scholars by this 316 method. Uh, uh, as far as you know, at least what I think I learned, uh, because of all this, uh, all, all, all this surveying, you know, you can. Uh, uh, so, so that's you know the conclusions. T today I'm talking about the methodology. Uh, fifth lecture I'm talking about what I think the methodology uh, 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 gave me as output. Uh, and the sixth lecture is is uh, where I I'm, I'm trying to do uh, to explain uh, computer science approaches to some of the to some of the really tough questions of theology, uh, things like free will, as I said before, and determinism, things like uh, uh, the, the uh, evolution and creation, uh, and uh, uh, there's well, I have a whole bunch of other uh, of other ideas I'm saving for that for that sixth lecture, uh, uh, just because I didn't want to have it anticlimax. So. So, so that's coming up in the future, and uh, but now that's all I had to say for about randomization today, except for your questions. Yes, you have a question. Oh, yeah. um, you obviously, you said how you had a three point one test. You, you, you obviously point out how you have a pretty bright line test to which verse you look at, verse three sixteen. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so the the uh, the question is after you know I start with 316, but then I can, but but then it's up to me to decide what 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 interests me for the other. So, so I, I was systematic in the sense of that I'll especially I'll talk about to, uh, next week with respect to translations. That is, I, uh, with the vocabulary, I tried to find uh, uh, all the rare words in, in in the 316 verse. I tried to find uh, uh, where else that. They were using the Bible, or or other, you know, or by that author, uh, uh, especially by that author, uh, if, if possible. Um, and uh, similarly, uh, about the, uh, the the ideas treated in there, uh, I, I would do that. Um, 
I, I went, uh, uh, but but then uh, 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 sometimes uh, it would just be a quirk. Like for example, I found out that Ruth uh, 315 um, was had a very interesting history at, um, because of a typographic error in the King James Bible. So I and, and so I, I couldn't resist uh, talking about that because I was into typography, you know. Okay, so so uh, yeah, so so it's definitely a, a bias. By the way, uh, uh, yeah, my, my it, it turned out that just at the same time as I published this book, um, uh, a movie came out uh, uh, called 315, and it turns out that uh, this was a movie for 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 teenagers. Uh, 315 is when school lets out, and this is what happened at, at, at that. Right. But uh, so so uh, oh well, uh, now. But so I so I did always try to you know you know sometimes uh, I, I um, you know I, I I couldn't use a definite rule for this case because uh, sometimes the story ends at the 16th verse and starts at the first verse sometimes the story begins at the 16th verse and goes on so so of course I would I, I would use I would use that as as, as a clue um, I I would uh, um, I, I I guess I went. Uh, Far afield, also in Numbers 3:16, because there was there was something where I could use my mathematical skills, and that there's a bias there that somebody else would have would have done it a different way. Um, it turned out that that uh, uh, some some uh, uh, there, there, there's some very very peculiar uh, numerical properties to the numbers that are reported for the census that's taken in the book of Numbers, and it can be explained in a, by by understanding the linguistic basis for for numbers, uh, which would indicate uh, that the that th that the data is actually more ancient than th than the person who is writing it, writing it down. And, I, and again, I couldn't resist that, so I so I got I got tempted by by some real uh, tidbits that were that were slightly off the methodology. Um, but but primarily, I I I I, I had a pr I had a system. I think that uh, you, you you can judge for yourself, but I but I I I, I followed my my own instincts as to what was interesting or not. But pretty much I I wanted to get the context and then and and really but really zoom in on uh, on all the all the things that are that are directly for this uh, for this main verse. Yeah. Okay. Now, left wing. Yes. Yeah. The question is, uh, uh, some Bibles have different verse numberings than others. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the, for example, the um, uh, in the uh, in in the Latin in the Vulgate, uh, the Psalms have different have a different numbering uh, scheme. So Psalm, you know, the, the Psalm I know is Psalm 23 is Psalm 24 in the in the Vulgate. Uh, there is quite there 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 there, is, um, there there are several other cases uh, uh, besides uh, where where I could have used a different one, but I so I so my rule was I I would use the one that was the most common in English Bibles, the, uh, like the King James Bible and its predecessor, uh, because this was this was true actually in the vast majority of, of Bibles they have at least this as a you know, as an italicized number, if not a Roman number, uh, for the ones that because everyone has to has to know that one and and, and some others. The, uh, the later Bibles, the ones that that new new translations come out, uh, uh, they'll reorder some of the verses because they'll there there's good scholarly evidence that uh, the, the text got the text got mangled, um, uh, and uh, sometimes even parts of one chapter will move into another in the Book of Job and so on. But this. Uh, but still, they retain the they retain the numbering scheme. Uh, they didn't they didn't renumber the verses. So, but they, there are some there are a few differences. It, I think it only would have affected uh, one or maybe two of the uh, of the three sixteens, actually. Uh, now I'm going to take the right hand. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, so the, the 59 that I have are all from the uh, from the, the, the main canonical books. Um, the um, uh, by the way, I should say that the ones that are, are left out, uh, I, I was 
it wasn't hard to see why why it was reasonable to leave them out because they were all similar to other books that were that were that were neighboring to them. So uh, you know, Obadiah uh, or Haggai are rather similar. Uh, uh, Titus was very much like Timothy. Uh, Jude was very much like Second Peter, and so on. Um, now. Uh, but the, but about the Apocrypha, the books like Judith and Tobit and Maccabees and, and, and so on, uh, those uh, those I left out. Um, I, I tried to keep you know the the, the project down to a reasonable size. But uh, if I were to study the Apocrypha, uh, that's what I would do first: is, is try is try the same method on them. Yes, uh, I've got to go over here. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I, in computer science studies, I have, uh, I, I've never been that much of a fan of worst case estimates. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and you could, you know, I, I've heard that joke too, and, and, it, and uh, um, I, I, you know, I doubt if it's a true story, but because, uh, you know, you, uh, because you have to work pretty hard to, in order to do that, but, it hap but there are some very depressing Verses, if you take them, if you take them that way, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, you could you could find other examples on the other side as well. So, um, uh, but I I I have no way to know that uh, without you know without doing doing more and more tests like I did on these on these paths. You know, I did a few thousand tests to get that one. Um, here I've done 59 tests. Um, but I, uh, you know, I, I just had this feeling that the standard deviation was small enough that uh, that it was that, that that it was reasonable. But but no, I I don't know. Uh, that's what, as I say, overconfidence was was uh, was the greatest uh, flaw in this in this method. That it, it seems to work. Uh, you have to remind yourself that it's that it might not be be, be the whole thing. However, I, I I would say that given the amount of hours I put into this, it it, it beats any other method. <laughs> It, that would do it in, in that amount of time. It, 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 it couldn't be satisfying to me to, for somebody else to give me a reading program and say, read this, 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 and this, and this. Um, I, I would have to, to, to wonder if, if, you know, that if, if, if somebody else would, might not have given me, uh, you know, a, a particular one, and just because the per first person might have given me those three verses that you, that you mentioned. Uh, back, way back. Yes. So the the um, I think the Old Testament had 39 of the of the verses, and the New Testament had the other the other 20, um, or was it 38 and 21? Anyway, something like that, I believe. I, I can't remember the details, uh, uh, but it was. Um, so I have uh, a, a lot more, um, uh, yeah, um, about two thirds uh, in, in in the Old Testament. Uh, the um, uh, but there is. Uh, and, and in the New Testament, not only do you have the time frame, but you have the fact that uh, Paul wrote uh, a lot of epistles. Um, so, um, and so I got into one author uh, a lot more that way, although uh, the Deuteronomic Deuter history in the Old Testament also uh, uh, it makes a fairly consistent uh, pattern. Um, yeah, it... Uh, 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 the... the uh, the, uh, the, the, the I, I would say the sampling method allows you to, to see exactly how how time influences things. Um, uh, in, in, it, 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 it gives you a pretty good insight in, into into this kind of similarities and differences. Okay. Um, back second last row. Yes, it's you. Third last. 
What was it? Right, the least interesting verse um, is, it was hard to say. People have said you're bound to run into a genealogy. And, uh, and it's true. I, um, uh, First Chronicles 3.16 was a ge genealogy, but it turned out to be a really interesting genealogy. Um, I, I came to the conclusion that, that, that if, I, if, if I were a pastor of a church, I could speak on any one of these 59 uh, on a Sunday morning and give a sermon that would not be a, that would not be a dud. <laughs> Um, uh, and and uh, I said this to a pastor at, at, at University Lutheran at Stanford, and he took me up on it. Um, uh, and he, he, and uh, along came, you know, the, the reading for the for the day was Micah 3:16, and uh, so he he invited me to preach the sermon that day. And well, uh, I got even with him. Uh, I mean, you know how professors always talk for 50 minutes. Uh, so so I. I so, so I, I, I gave a sermon, and, I, and, before, and before I realized how long I was going on, it had lasted 50 minutes. Um, but, um, so he didn't ask me anymore. But anyway, uh, 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 I, I don't think I wasted any of those 50 minutes either. I, I, you know, 5-0. Uh, uh, the, uh, but but uh, I would say that um, I had to stretch the most on Numbers 3, 316. Uh, which was simply the text is uh, uh, to, it, it, there's almost nothing he, he, uh, Moses enumerated the sons of Levi as he had been commanded by God now um, I, I, I looked at a lot of there but to find out what you know I had to go and figure out what the enumeration was all about so, so, so that's where I think I, 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 I had to uh, uh, push a little bit but in almost every case I had to cut uh, in order, I have, I have a very tight format in this book. Um, uh, you know, with, with each book, I have I have a, a page that is an introduction to the book. It sort of gives the whole. You, know, you have to understand something about the author and the context, what, what period of time it's coming from. So, so this tells about uh, you know sort of summarizes the book in this case of Zechariah. Then I have calligraphy of the Zechariah 3:16. Then I have two pages uh, that uh, uh, summarize everything I was able to find in the libraries about uh, Zechariah 3:16 which actually turns out to be Zechariah 4.6. Um, now, uh, uh, but also there's a certain number of, you know, fixed number of lines on this page. I had to use tech to, 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 uh, uh, to, to, to typeset it and make sure there are no widow lines and so, so, so on. But I had, but I had to write, I, 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 had, um, I, I had to cut to get down to this number of lines. And, and so I have a lot of discretionary paragraphs in there that in the manuscript that, that says, you know, leave this out if you don't have space. And I had to leave, leave out a lot. So I didn't find that much, uh, um, uh, uh, to, to my surprise, I didn't find that much deadwood, you know, to, where, where there wasn't much to talk about. And, and I would say Numbers 316 had to be the, uh, the one that, where I had to um, uh, uh, go out into the context uh, before I got a story. Michael? Right. Sequences which code for all this, not the nonsense. And do some kind of sampling of the, the stretch. And then, for example, distinguish between, uh, between uh, a genes of the, uh, or a set of genes of plant life uh, systems uh, and animals. Yeah. Are, 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 were people able to understand this? My, my, uh, my, Michael Raven says so. Uh, consider, first of all, uh, applying this method to the U.S. tax code, uh, and uh, you would, and, and he, he figures that uh, even in spite of the fact that it's pretty dull, you would, you would, you'd be able to get the idea of the U.S. tax code by random sampling. Then he said, now, what if you to apply, try to apply this to genes, uh, to, you know, to bi biology problem DNA? There's a complex thing for, and uh, there's lots of, 
you know, there, there's lots of, of, uh, uh, of code that doesn't get expressed in proteins that people are wondering, what, what is it there for? Is it, and uh, could you tell by random sampling maybe uh, whether or not uh, plants uh, are a lot different in this respect than, uh, than animals and, and so on? You know, I, uh, I have a... I have a hunch that when, uh, don't take me seriously, I have a hunch that when these unknown parts of the DNA are, are decoded, it's going to turn out to be copyright notices. You know, the patent protection. So, uh, uh, but, um, uh, but, uh, but, but, but this, yeah, but in, in the, G, what, in the, Yes, or, or and, and to, to the parts that, that are that are expressed, and not the, and not the parts in between that 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 are that are aren't done. Yeah, um, uh, that really ought to be done. I mean, I I think uh, uh, you know somebody would would work on a, on a few of these and try to do exhaustive uh, understanding of uh, of a few things taken at random instead of trying to solve the whole problem. Uh, of course, the people do that in some sense. They, they you know they look very much at a gene that seems to be correlated with multiple sclerosis or something. Um, uh, so, but this, this, this random method would give you more of an idea about the whole, uh, um, the whole process of, of, of genes, not, the, not, the, not a one, you know, one specific one. Yeah, very good points. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to, to, to choose unbiased, say, Anna, can you choose me? Can, can you choose questions? Can, can you, yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, I think it would work. It would work in the sky. Um, uh, I, I, I really think that that you, that you you get a you get a balanced understanding of something if you if you look at the random parts of it. Um, this has worked so well in, in in so many other things. I can't see that. I mean, you know, you take problems in computational geometry and and they they study a little bit of it and they can figure out uh, properties of a, of, a, uh, of, of, of constructions that weren't done by human beings. They're purely mathematical type things or, or things that, that uh, ar uh, arose uh, uh, in, in ways that don't seem to relate to intelligence particularly. Um, so I would say uh, no matter what uh, complicated thing you have, there's a fairly good chance that random sampling, well, I don't know. If you start out with purely random data, then random random sampling is, is going to tell you that it was purely random data. Anna, you, you get to choose the one. Um, I just was curious whether you felt that your qualitative analysis would have been better if you chose a purely random sampling method as opposed to the sort of human heuristic uh, that you ended up choosing for ease of determination in your course. Right. What, what, do I think I would have a better sample if I'd used a, a purely random thing? For example, I could have. Uh, um, well, okay, I I, I didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't. I, I don't think it was it was a bad idea to get only um, uh, uh, one verse out of a out of a long book that had one author. Uh, but I thought it was it was bad to get only one verse out of the Psalms that had many authors. Uh, because uh, uh, there, there's something about the, uh, you, you know, even though, even though the uh, book of Ecclesiastes is very short, I think it's a very important part of the Bible. So I, so I, 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 I wouldn't want it to be underrepresented by a method that just takes every, every verse uh, equal, equally. I, I would definitely want to have something that, that, uh, that has some kind of stratification by authors or something like that. Uh, but but given that, I think I could probably have have gotten slightly better qualitative uh, things if I had a, if I had a random thing. But nobody would have known if I had done it fairly. Uh, not I, I didn't start out writing this book uh, with the idea that anybody w was going to check whether I'm doing being fair or not. Uh, I started out just because I, you know with this class and 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 we found it worked, and so then we made it into a book. But in fact, uh, it. Uh, um, 
after the fact, it is, it is more interesting that you got the qualitative method by something that that's, uh, you know, was, was, was fairly clearly not rigged. Um, in the fifth lecture, however, I'm going to uh, uh, ad admit that, uh, there, that there probably was some rigging. Um, and, you know, in this, that lecture where I'm giving the, uh, uh, with the, w the conclusions, uh, I'm also going to, to, to mention that uh, it's possible that, that the reason I chose the 316 rule in the first place was that I had, you know, that I had heard somebody say, oh, Galatians 316, you know, and I would say, hmm, interesting, you know, in the back of my mind, this might have been there, uh, uh, suggesting that I would choose this rule uh, for other verses than John. It's not an impossible thing. I'm going to address that question in the fifth lecture. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.